Okay guys, back with the Earth Circle. And today I want to talk about this female commissar being released by Games Workshop uh, and Black Library to go along with the Black Library celebration. I believe her name is Severina Rain, according to the article, and I don't know a thing about her. I just know that, from what I've been told, she has appeared in a couple of short stories, but is essentially a new character. Now, this episode is going to be less about the model and more about an infuriating thing I've picked up on when talking about this model in our community. And that's the fact that whenever you point something out, people take it as a fucking negative. It is not a negative to point out a fact about something, okay? You can perceive it as negative, but stating that a spade is a spade, that the colour white is the colour white, that the colour silver is the colour silver, that she's wearing an armoured chest plate, you know, things like that are facts. They're not inherently negative because you're pointing them out. So let's just get that out of the way, straight out of the gate. This model is fine. I am totally down with it being a chick. Totally down with more female models being introduced into the game. Faction appropriate, of course. Like... Obviously, female space marines are a bit of a no-go, let's face it. But overall, factions like the Imperial Guard, yeah, they should have female soldiers. Uh, factions like the Eldar, the Tau, yeah, they're going to both use female soldiers. The Tyranids and, well, the Orcs, uh, they're spore people and alien parasites. Who knows what gender is what with those, so I guess they don't count. Uh, Chaos, you can have some sort of androgynous thing maybe going with the followers of Slanesh. But overall, we're pretty light on women in 40k. Fantasy's pretty good about it, you know. There's more and more female models being introduced into that, especially the Daughters of Cain range. And 40k, of course, is going to get more Sisters of Battles pretty soon. The Adeptus Sororitas, or whatever they want to call them now. So, yeah, female model, good. What... I find peculiar, and again, this is not a negative, it's just stating a fact, is that this is relatively unknown, okay? Meanwhile, there are well-known characters in the novels, really beloved characters, no models. Look at Dawn of War, okay? Dawn of War video games were huge. We're up to our third Dawn of War now, um, and over the years, we've had all these different characters introduced, Chaos, and... Blood Ravens, the Eldar, of course. None of those characters, except for Gabriel Angelos, have been brought to life as miniatures. Old Gabriel Angelos, in fact, only got a miniature with the Dawn of War 3 release. That's not a very good miniature at that. And it's a Forge World miniature, not a plastic one, which this looks to be, or a fine cast one in this case, coming out of Games Workshop. So, it's a bit bizarre to me that that's the way they've gone about it. This model here is what I'm starting to call a Captain Phasma. Now, a Captain Phasma is the character that was released with the Force Awakens Star Wars. It was built up in all the promotional stuff beforehand. Constant pictures of this silver stormtrooper, all played by Gwendolyn Christie. It's a strong female character. And the film came out and she's in like three scenes. And people were like, uh, okay, so what's interesting about this character? She has silver armor. That's literally the development of the character. Uh, same sort of thing happened in Force Awakens. Phasma's going to have a big role in the in the Force. Uh, sorry, the uh, Last Jedi. No, she didn't. Rocks up for a couple of scenes. Gets in a fight with Finn. It's pretty bad overall. Anyway, this is Captain Phasma. Here's a character who's being released, but there's no real. She hasn't done anything yet. Yeah, she's in an upcoming book. So what? There are characters from the Horus Heresy, for example, uh, Latara Saren, the captain of the World Eaters flagship, the Conqueror. So she's in charge of the World Eaters fleet, okay? And she's a badass. Everyone loves this character, this female character. Why can't we have her? She'd be pretty cool to have in the Heresy. Limited edition miniatures or event only miniatures, that's the sort of cool miniature that I like. Faction specific, you know. No, we just get this commissar. And part of my problem 
is that this commissar, despite being female, doesn't really embody any sort of feminine attributes. Now, some people will go, oh, that's great, that's fantastic, you know, gender inclusivity, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, what's the point of making it a girl if it's not obvious that it's a girl? Because it's not. She looks like teenage boys who join the military. It's almost like they're wearing their dad's uniform and it's like a kid in costume as opposed to a professional soldier. And she, with the short hair, she doesn't have like a long flowing ponytail or something like that, with the cap on obscuring her hair or any potential sort of hair that she might have a ponytail. From this angle, she looks almost androgynous, uh, like a teenage boy. The chest plate, now people may complain about breastplates and oh you shouldn't have tits model on armor. But the thing is, you're sculpting in 28mm. What are the attributes of a female body, if you can tell by like silhouette or something like that? Obviously women have bigger hips than guys on average, thinner shoulders, and they have breasts. Funny enough, some guys do too, you know, that's neither here nor there. Gynecomastia, serious problem. Now, this model, unfortunately, we can't tell what hips she has because it's obscured by the clothing she's wearing. Same with the shoulders, she has these big shoulder pads on, so obviously immediately lacks the feminine qualities. We can't see what hair she has, of course, whether she's got long hair, because the cap's blocking all that. Uh, chest plate. Well, she has a single carousier type chest plate, and yes, this is practical armor. Well, as practical as a steel chest plate will be in the 41st millennium. Uh, it is practical, but it doesn't embody any feminine aspects. So we're basically left with the face. And her face here, well, she has a pretty strong jawline and a pointy chin. Yep, that's feminine quality. Maybe if she had stronger cheekbones. It's hard to tell. We've only got this one image to work with. But basically... Because the model's so small, you have to exaggerate proportions in order to show that, hey, this is a female, this is a male, that sort of thing, and we're not getting that. So, this looks like an androgynous being. Could be a boy, could be a girl, make of it what you will. That's fine. If people want to include this as a young commissar moving up through the ranks in the Imperial Guard armies, hey, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. Again, I've got nothing against the model, nothing against it existing. I just find it curious that, A... It's this fucking no-name when there's all these other rich characters to pick from in the Black Library, women included. You know, um, whether you want to pick the Farseer out of Dawn of War, for example, there's a pretty good choice for you. Or any other range of different characters like Jane Zar. I'd love to see a new sculpt of her. In fact, I'd love to see all the Phoenix Lords get a fucking new sculpt because it's been 30 years nearly. Um, and yet... We just get this. Here's someone from a book that hasn't come out yet and has cameoed in another book. I don't give a shit. I've got no investment in this character. Okay? It's just signalling something to me. And I'm not saying virtue signalling. I'm just saying it's signalling something to me. And it's fine to have marketing tie-ins. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, it's a good idea to tie in the novel with new characters and blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, well, why this particular model? Of all the books coming out, all the different things coming out, this is the model we do, we choose to use for our tie-in. It just seems a bit odd as a choice. Especially because a Commissar is very restricted to what factions it can play in. You know, if it was something like a Navigator or something like that, lots of people could use, yeah, it would work better. Um, I don't know. If it was an Eldar character, then yeah, I guess that would only work for one faction, so I can't complain too much. But it just seems bizarre to me. And, yeah, the other bizarre thing is the fact that it's so androgynous. It could be a teenage boy, you know, or a very young baby-faced commissar coming up through the ranks. Sure. And it's not a bad thing if you like that, but it defeats the purpose of it being a female sculpt and being lauded as a female sculpt. So, once again, guys, just because I express an opinion or point out something, it doesn't mean I'm being fucking negative. You know, let's just get over that fact. Can we not accept that this does not look like a female? This looks like a teenage boy. Or a teenage girl. It doesn't really matter. It could be either. Either or. It's a fact. It's not a negative. It just is what it is. Pointing it out. Pointing it out doesn't make me Hitler. <sighs> this is the same reason, by the way, that I don't want to cover Blanchitsu. Because there are so many terrible, terrible things there. 
and when you point out all these terrible conversions bad paint jobs people won't just accept it they won't just go yeah you've got a point there by any measurable means that's objectively bad people won't do that they'll just say oh, it's their hobby it's like yeah it is their fucking hobby doesn't mean it's not objectively bad <laughs> i mean if you want to paint bad that's great but if you want to show it off and expect praise for badness that's not how it works i'm not here to celebrate mediocrity and that's why i don't want to cover that topic and do a whole video on it even though inside i really do because i know i just, just bad press because people can't be adults they can't turn around on the internet and say you're giving valid criticism you're being objective here you're pointing out facts instead they immediately say oh so you don't like it that she doesn't have breastplate armor it's like well, no i'm just saying if she had breasts molted into the armor it would obviously look more like a female it's not a bad thing it's just it's simple it's logical you have 28 millimeters with which to sculpt the air and you can make that model whatever you like in that 28 millimeters but that's all you've got to work with in order to convey a message and this model conveys no message to me is it a boy is it a girl nothing Someone like Eisenhorn, yeah, I can tell who that is. I can tell that's a dude, straight away. This, who knows? Just weird. So, yeah, once more, for the people in the back, I like the model. I just find it strange that it's a teenage boy, and weird that out of all the possible combinations of models and characters released all over this time by Black Library, this is what they've chosen to go with just seems strange it took 10 years to get gabriel angelos in, from dawn of war and we got none of the other characters but we've got this commissar who no one is attached to how great is that just seems like a waste in that regard i guess that's a negative if we want to you know, split hairs Anyway, hate away. I'm back with the Outer Circle. Thank you all for watching. See you all when I get back from the Act of Heresy.